Greetings dear children. In this video, we are going to learn Shakespeare's Julius Caesar, Act 1, Scene 1. Let's begin the class. Let's look at the characters present in Act 1, Scene 1. Flavius and Marillus, who are they? They are the tribunes. Answer is there. Two points are there. Anyone you can write. Roman officials chosen by the plebeians to protect their interest. Another meaning for tribunes or if the question is asked who are Flavius and Marlus, two representatives of the Roman government. Then we see a crowd of commoners. In that crowd of commoners, two characters are highlighted here. First citizen who is a carpenter and second citizen a cobbler. So total four characters are there in the scene. Flavius, Marlus, first citizen who is a carpenter and second citizen who is a cobbler. Let's look at the summary of Act. Let's look at the summary of Act One, Scene One. I have given it in six points. The first one: Where does the scene take place? Street of Rome. Who plays the major role in the play? Pickle mob means crowd. The adjective pickle is added to show the constant behavioral change. What does the scene highlight? Popularity of Caesar and jealousy of tribunes. Tribunes we know: Flavius and Marius. What is the action here in the scene? Workmen are rejoicing in Caesar's triumph over the sons of his old rival Pompey. So reaction is the tribunes rebuke them, scold them and order them to return to their work. They drive the crowd off the street. They here refers to tribunes drive, send the crowd off the streets of Rome and set about removing all the street decorations. Why did they do? So that Caesar's procession will seem a failure. Act 1, Scene 1. I have given here some questions. Children, you can answer it. Here we see Act 1, Scene 1. The people of Rome, citizens, leaving their work and they are rejoicing at Caesar's triumph over the sons of his old rival, Pompey. So, the tribunes are angry and upset. So, Flavius questions them calling them idle creatures, get you home, go home you idle people, leave from this place. They are trying to drive them off from the streets of Rome. You idle people go home and he questions, is this a holiday? Any religious festival is going on here, leaving your work and you are in best attire, dress. Don't you know, being mechanical means laborers, working men. Don't you know, you are not supposed to walk upon a laboring day, a working day without the sign of your profession. Don't you know this? Sign of your profession, as per the law, a laborer had to have on a working day the outward signs of his trade upon his person. At the end of the dialogue, he asked the question to one of the citizens there, what is your trade? So the first citizen answered, I'm a carpenter, sir, a carpenter. To Flavius, the first citizen answered that he is a carpenter. So Marlis cross-questioned him. If you are a carpenter, where is your leather garment and your rule? Instead of this, why are you wearing the best apparel? Why are you in this best apparel in the streets of Rome? That you a working day. At the end, he questioned the second citizen, what trade are you? What is your trade? So he answered in an indirect way. He did not tell like the first citizen that he is a cobbler. But he said that in respect of a fine workman, compared to the fine workman, I am, as you would say, you can call a cobbler. He did not say that he is a cobbler. He gave the option to the tribunes only that you can call, as you would say, a cobbler. Here the literary term used is workman. Two meanings are there for the term cobbler. One is mender of shoes. The other one is bungler. Here it means, here the second citizen means the meaning of the term cobbler. Poor unskilled workman. I am a simple, I am a poor unskilled workman. He did not say the profession directly. For that the tribunes get angry. 
he responded or he replied asking what is your trait answer me directly how does he react one more point is there answer me directly and he called the second citizen as a name so this is the reaction so second citizen again replied a trait sir a profession and i expect i may use my profession with a safe conscience which is indeed a mender of bad soul so here we see what is the pun involved with the word soul s o l e and s o u l that is clear or safe conscience is s o u l what is the pun involved with the word soul here the p said that he is a mender of bad souls the pun involved is symbolizing bad shoe souls with that of human souls so we have seen that the second citizen answered that he is a mender of bad souls he did not say the profession directly so mender of bad souls remember a repairer of a shoes that have bad souls s o l e s that means the bottom part of the shoes that means a cobbler but he did not say directly a cobbler as you would say he said and he is giving the answer indirectly as i told the pun on the word that is s o l e and s o u l it has two meanings s o l e is the bottom of the shoes and s o u l the inner character of the person so mender of s o l e changes the bad bottom part of the shoes into a good soul s o l e but the mender of good soul s o u l the mender of soul changes a bad man into a good man pun is remember pun is a humorous use of word or similar sounding two words in two different senses so he did not give the answer marlus gets angry and he addressed him as you naughty knave this is the response answer me directly and called address the second citizen as naughty knave tell me what is your profession again he did not answer he said nay no i request you i beseech you please be not out with me yet if you be out then i can mend you so what does it mean here here he means that the cobbler again use uh, is using a pun to make a joke here out see that be not out with me that means out can mean either angry or worn out see here pun on the word out the first meaning is angry the second one is worn out the cobbler here says that if flavius is angry with him then he can calm him down yes i can mend you i can calm you down but if your shoes are worn out that i can mend your shoes i can repair your shoes so the literary term is pun out two meanings are there angry if the tribune is angry he can calm him down if his uh, shoes it is worn out then it can be repaired by him marlus gets angry again what do you mean by that you saucy fellow you rude fellow you are going to repair me you mend me yes cobble sir yes i can mend here he means that if you are angry i can calm you down if your shoes is worn out i can repair it then citizen did not the second citizen did not answer flavius he comes to the conclusion that so you are a cobbler aren't you so here we see that flavius has come to the conclusion that the second citizen is a cobbler and second citizen replies to flavius that truly sir all that i live by is with the all again the literary term pun is used a w l a w l all means cobbler's piercing tool there is a pun on a l l and a w l all my life here he means to say the first sentence all my life depends on a w l the tool with which i earn my livelihood and what does he say further he says that 
he does not interfere in any workers matter or any women's matters but nevertheless i am indeed truly a surgeon to old shoes surgeon to old shoes here refers to a repairer of worn out shoes i don't interfere in others matter any workers matter women's matter but i am a repairer of worn out shoes when do i do the surgery surgeon to the old shoes when do i do when they are in great danger when they are they here refers to the shoes when it is worn out i repair it i recover them i repair it last sentence that he claims what kind of workman he is as proper man as ever trod upon needs leather have gone upon my handiwork this sentence is a claim what does he say he says that i can assure you that i have repaired the shoes of the best gentlemen who have gone about my work this was the claim or the assurance about his profession flavis as that fine you claim that you are such a good worker then why you are not in your shop today why are you here that you in best attire why are you leading these people about the street why does thou lead why are you leading these people he gives a very good answer to the question the answer is that thou truly sir why i am leading these men in the streets of rome the reason is to wear out their shoes and to get myself into more work so that they walk shoes will be worn out and i get more work thus i can flourish in my business this is the answer answer to the question at the end he reveals the truth why is he there that to in best attire we make a holiday consider is a it as a holiday for what to see caesar and to rejoice in his triumph in his victory the last line is the revelation why they are in best attire answer to the question it's left it for that why are you leading these people so that they wear out their shoes when it is worn out i get more work and he can flourish in his work in his business at the end he reveals that why is he there in the best chapter consider it as a holiday to see caesar and to rejoice in caesar's triumph when the second citizen answered that they are in the best attire to rejoice on caesar's victory over the sons of pompey marlus gets angry and he questions the citizens gathered there why rejoice wherefore why what conquest brings he home what tributaries follow him to rome to graze in captive bonds his chariot wheels he questioned the citizens there what conquest does he bring home what tributaries means payers of taxes follow him to rome is there any one no if you are asked to explain to the line to graze in captive bonds his chariot wheels and sir prisoners tied with chains to the chariot of the conqueror to pay a respect to him through these questions marlus as the citizens of rome whether julius caesar had captured a king or acquired territory through this conquest he further questions them whether caesar had acquired the wealth for rome through this conquest he had not brought any territory to rome by his conquest since the defeated he defeated only the fellow romans then he called them as blocks stones worse than senseless things hard hearted and cruel men of rome don't you remember pompey a few points about nice pompey the great roman general and statesman the last obstacle in the rise to power of julius caesar he along with julius caesar and marcus crassus formed the first triumvirate in 60 bc He married Julius Caesar's daughter Julia. Pompey was defeated by Caesar in Italy and again at Pharsalus in 48 BC. He escaped to Egypt but was killed there by order of the Roman dominated Egyptian government. So the time of Pompey was reminded by Marlus. Don't you remember? How does he remind? Answer is many 
still shows. Still there the answer is. Many a time and often have you climbed up to walls and battlements, terrace, towers and windows. You have climbed even to the chimney tops. How? With your infants in your arms. And what did you do? Sat there the whole day. How? With patiently expecting to see great Pompey pass the streets of Rome. Coming back victoriously when he was passing the streets of Rome. Just to have a glance at him. The whole day you waited. And when you see his chariot. But up here. What did you do? How did you react when you have seen? Universal shout. The joyful scream. Pompey has come back victoriously. What is the consequence of this universal shout? Answer is Tiber till concave shores. The river Tiber trembled underneath her banks. River Tiber, the third longest river in Italy, runs through Rome. It trembled underneath her banks. To hear the replication, the echo of your sounds made in the hollow banks. This has happened. This was happened at the time of Pompey. Have you forgotten? And now, how do the people now prepare for the triumphal entry of Caesar? Three points are there. Put on your best chatter. Those questions, you can change it as answer. Answer to the question, how do the people now prepare for the triumphal entry? Put on your best chatter. You consider, call out a holiday. Stew flowers in his way. And that too, you are doing this. That comes in triumph over Pompey's blood. That too, Pompey's blood here refers to the sons of Pompey whose blood has been shed. So what did you, what you are supposed to do for your ingratitude? He gives some instructions and advice at the end of this dialogue. Run to your houses, fall upon your knees, pray to God to stop the plague that must need light on this ingratitude. The last three lines answer to the advice or instruction. They are asked to run to their houses, go down on their knees and pray to God to delay the punishment, intermit the plague, delay the punishment that will certainly fall on this ingratitude that they have shown to Pompey. So Marlis advised them what the citizens are supposed to do for being ingratitude to Pompey. So we should know that why does the speaker want to achieve by his speech in that lengthy speech. The speaker does not want the people of Rome to celebrate the victory of Julius Caesar. He is worried. The tribunes are worried that the celebration of this victory will make Julius Caesar the absolute ruler of Rome and a tyrant. The speaker wants to make the common man realize his thoughtless and fickleness, that means continuously changing their behavior, the thoughtless and the fickleness, and wants them to regret for that. And Plavius continues the instruction, go, good countrymen, now you go. For this fault, being in gratitude, fault means being in gratitude. What you are supposed to do? Assemble all the poor men of yours or this kind of people, those who have shown ingratitude to Pompey. You all should gather. Where they should gather? Tiber banks. All should gather. The banks of river Tiber. What they should do there? Weep so much that your tears fall into the river until the lowest part of the river, the lowest stream, the lowest part of the river rises so much that it touches the highest part of its bank. The citizens move from the place and Flavius makes a remark there. The next two lines answer. See whether their basis metal be not moved. Anyway, they vanish tongue tied in their guiltiness. That means, see if their humble spirit, their humblest spirit is moved or not moved. They at once listening to our advice or instruction or scoldings, they leave at once in absolute silence feeling guilty. Now we have something to do. Flavia said that. 
you go down that way towards the capital capital is the temple of jupiter you go towards that direction and i make this side this direction this way i will go what we are supposed to do when we go into different directions answer is disrobe the images if you find them decked with a ceremonies so flavius instructed marlus to remove the decorations from caesar's statues so marlus had a doubt may we do so are we supposed to do now what is the reason why does he express his concern and doubt the reason is it's the feast of lupercal feast of lupercal a great fertility feast held on 15 february in honor of god lupercus to ensure the increase of the flocks and herd flavius answer flavius what did he say it does not matter it is no matter it does not matter let no images be hung with caesar's trophies no images be hung with caesar's trophies means caesar's statues do not allow any statues to be decorated commemorating caesar so what we should do i will about and drive away the vulgar from the streets i shall go on and drive away the vulgar here refers to the common people the citizens from the streets even you to do wherever you see them in great numbers so that what they can achieve lessen caesar so that it will help them lessening of caesar's growing popularity and power so that he will behave like an ordinary man these growing feathers plucked from caesar's wing will make him fly an ordinary pitch explain you are asked to explain these lines answer is if we suppress the growing popularity of caesar he will behave like an ordinary man just as we we pluck out the feathers from wings of a bird it will not be able to fly high so here the feathers caesar's wing here caesar is compared to a bird and if we suppress them so that caesar will not fly high will make him fly an ordinary pitch for that what we should do we should drive the crowd off the street of rome who else otherwise caesar would soar above the view of men out of our sight and what will be the consequence if he flies high and keep us all in servile fearfulness who would otherwise fly very high and the consequence is keep us all fearful like slaves the last two lines who else till fearfulness if you are asked to explain there is a literary term used there the literary term is metaphor the comparison of caesar's popularity and power with the wings of a bird otherwise he will soar out of our sight and will make us slaves always fearful of him this was the reason why did he ask marulus to drive off to drive the crowd of the streets of rome Thank you.